Hebrews 13, 8. Hebrews 13, 8, the word of God says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. As things change around you, know the constant, which is Christ, and that is the one we've come to seek tonight as we worship him in the beauty of holiness. Thank you, the praise team, for the work you've been doing. May you come and lead the church again as we sing hymn 308. Let us join them to sing to our Lord and Savior. May we rise? I would be the Savior, only thine. Let's sing. I would be the Savior, only thine. Teach me how, teach me how. I would do thy will, O Lord, not mine. Help me, help me now. Our Heavenly Father, our Creator and our Redeemer, in a special way we are before the throne of grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your tender care that you have taken upon us since we started this semester. And now we are approaching the end of this semester. We have come, and now at this juncture we claim thy promises that you promised to direct our steps. This whole day, after exam, there are those who will be traveling. We pray, Lord, thy traveling masses. Also, God, you promised to supply our needs. There are those who are in needy. God, may you provide. You are God who provide. Also, not forgetting that you promised God to not to leave us, nor to forsake us. May you be our guide in everything. Them also, thank you for good plans which you have for us. Plans of prosperity, and successfulness. 
in a special way, thy minister, Dr. Mumbo, is going to minister. God, may you use him in a special way. You have already anointed him, and God, we are here to listen to thy word. Make it simple and clear to us. God, thank you for your written our names in the book of life. More so, God, see us through in everything. This humble prayer, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Allow me to bring you the announcements of the evening. But even before I do so, we request those who are far back to draw closer, to draw closer and closer to the pulpit so that we may be able to even have a better view and glimpse of the speaker and that he may also feel our presence as we draw closer to him. Thank you for your cooperation as we do that. The chaplaincy wishes to welcome us to this worship service. Again, may we feel at the feet of Jesus. This Sabbath, the 20th November 2021, there will be a baptism. All those who wish to receive Jesus through baptism are encouraged to register with the chaplaincy office right up here. You have that opportunity to do that even right after this service. And may you inform your roommate, your plot mate of this great opportunity that they may not miss it out even as we come to the close of this semester of the great news of the baptism that is upcoming. The chaplaincy wishes to also request members, all of us who are seated here, to consider donating in cash or in kind to the needy kitty to help in assisting needy students and other members of the community. I'm reminded that it's more blessed to give than to receive. Let's give of ourselves and the resources that we have to help our neighbor, even during a time like this of exams. They will come in handy, and that will be a blessing unto you. May God bless you all as we worship him. Amen. evening worship hour. Our reading today comes from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, and the Bible reads, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that by the renewing of your, sorry, chapter, uh, verse 2, and be not conformed to this word, but, you, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Thanks for the reading. God bless you. Allow me to bring unto you the people who are serving this evening. We want to appreciate the audiovisual team that is making sure that we are heard in addition to the Baraton TV team that is putting us live. May God bless you all. Thank you, the praise team. And we want to appreciate the chaplaincy that is also working in the background to make sure these programs run on well and smoothly. And I can also see the deaconry we are making sure that we are in good order. May God bless you. Right in your presence tonight, we have the opening prayer which was presented by Pastor Joseph Musao, and the scripture reading which has just been done was by Sister Ruth Mwene, um, Joel Mutunji. Tonight, we invite your prayers as the servant of God takes the stage, uh, Dr. Duncan Mumbo, our chaplain. May you keep him in your prayers. He passionately takes on the message of God always, and may we pray that he may do it again as he speaks to us that we may be stirred for a moment like this.
But before he comes, we want to be mellowed by an item from the servant of God, Brother Frederick Adiero, come and give us a special item, which will be the first message of the night. God bless you all. Good evening. I'm going to do him 159, the old rugged cross. Be blessed. <clears throat> On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and blessed for a word of law sinners was slain. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. cross where the deep rest and best by the wondrous attraction for me for the dealing of God left his father above to bear it to the Calvary so I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross I will ever be true in shame and reproach gladly bear then he'll call me someday to my home far away where is glory forever I'll share so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last are laid down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my troll Peace at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We want to thank the gentlemen that have given us that song. It's one of the oldest but songs with meaning. When we remember that old cross, we know what love can do to set us free. I want to thank God for those who have come to this worship service. And uh, I'm praying that the Lord will be able to talk to each of us and be able to give us a new perspective and mind. By the way, there is a war going on. And uh, people talk of Star Wars or what kind of wars. But the greatest war that I'm talking about is the war of who will take care and control your mind. And so we are here. I know there are some of us who are thinking, now that is exam period. We will spend more time in the exams or preparing for it and uh, no time for prayer and for worship. I pray that those of us who have come to worship God will allow him to speak to us, will allow him to let us know his will. And today, if you get the text that we were reading, and I want you to look at it, I would want to give it uh, the look that I got when I was meditating upon it this morning. I'm reading the book of Romans. In fact, I'm through with it. And I've discovered many things. I will take part one this Wednesday and part two the next Wednesday of practical things that happen when we know Christ who is our Savior. So I want to welcome you who have come. Get your time now. You have come because you want to God talk to you. If you have your Bible, please put it near. And uh, let's pray that the Lord will take care of us. Let's pray. Father, we want to look into your word. We are human with limited knowledge. And how I pray that your spirit will speak to me. So that, Lord, your words will have meaning to me. And Lord, as I share it, it will come from you. And may the members who will listen to your word be able to get your word from you, to keep it, to practice it, and to walk with it, we pray in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 12 is the book that I'd want us to look at. If you're there, my Bible says, I beseech, starting from verse 1. If you have yours, you can read. You can look at it. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. I'm reading. I beseech you, therefore. And that word beseech means I plead. I go out of my way. I beg. I request. You know, there are things that are not good. We are not beseeched. I beseech you, therefore. I beseech you, therefore. Brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, accepted to God, which is your reasonable service. So I want to beseech you. And Paul is coming to pleading. There are two places when God, Paul changes the tune. In the Philippians, he goes crying. He goes weeping. Because when he sees how people are making decisions that will lead to their eternal loss, why do people weep and cry when people die? When you go to funerals or when you go, people die, why do people cry? Because you know you have reached a state where you cannot come back to life, at least for that moment. When the separation will be permanent. And sometimes when Paul looks at people, they see them making a decision that will seal the eternity forever. And that's why he said, I plead that you open the door of your heart to things that are critical, to things that are eternal, to things that not only decide what has happened now, but what will happen there after. And then he says, and do not 
be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what that is good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Now, the aspect I'd want us to look into that our minds, if not renewed, we will not know what we ought to do. Now, let me talk it gently. And I'll put a small title here, The Renewed Mind. If your mind is not renewed, then you will not know what is important, what is acceptable, what is good for you for and for others. The Renewed Mind. And how I pray that we who are here, we will take time to pray so that God can renew our mind and our perspective or what they call a mindset. So that God will give us a new one. And so Paul not only plead with people because he knows that once the mind is renewed, there are certain things that will happen and that will not happen. Now, I want to bring to you what I discovered this morning of the results of a renewed mind. And when you go to chapter 12 of the book of Romans and you go to verse 9, there are three things that will happen to those who are, their minds are renewed. Number one, in the book of Romans 12 verse 9, the Bible tells me, and I read it here first of all, it says, let love be without hypocrisy. And I'll put number one, those who have renewed minds have love without hypocrisy. By the way, love flows almost every time in the Bible. And here, so I like that one, number one. If you really have renewed mind, you will have love, yes, because God is love. But it is without hypocrisy. Hypocrisy, that means fake or plastic. Like I've seen, most people try, both men and women female, but female are more in this one. I may be having gray hair. Let's start with men, like me, like this one. Now, if I'm a hypocrite, I will go and dye it black. You see? So what you see deceives you that my hair is what? But actually, it is what? Gray. That's hypocrisy. I am trying to be what I'm not. I may be having bad hair, but I go and bring some air that I've bought and put it on. And when you look at me, you think that is my what? That is something else. I may be flat here. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> but since I don't want to be associated with things that are flat, I may buy even metal bra and put it out. Put it up. By the way, there are many things I don't want to go in that direction. But when you, you are hypocrite, that is something, yes, that will deceive somebody in what you are not. And people here have love, I've seen, and I don't know, let me come very careful here. You know, you may have somebody saying, I'm your girlfriend. And say, you know, you, you matter of it. And yet at the same time, or boyfriend, he has others. At night, there are others. In the daytime, I got a very sad story, and I want to put it in very gentle terms. Somebody was telling me, I have the one that I'm thinking that I will be married to. But I'm a one that I'm having nice time with. I don't know what those nice times mean. Now, if you have a, a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, do you know whether you are put under the one for a nice time or the one for, for marriage? Hello? You see, love should not have hypocrisy, not have double standard. Or you are a Christian, you say you love God, but the things that you do do not portray the love for what? 
Those with renewed minds have love without hypocrisy. That is transparent. That you can see here and see there. That do not depend on night. Time may not allow me to talk more on that one. Number two, those with renewed minds abhor or hate what is evil. Number two, those with a renewed mind abhor. That is extreme hate. So that's why the word hate is mild. The word abhor means extreme hatred. What is evil? So check yourself. What do you love? Things that are bad or things that are good. Things that are destructive. Like you see, some people may take their own body and start drawing or tattooing them or doing other things. You, you, you love. You, you will not want to come to church, yes. But you don't want to go to football. You want to do other things. You, there are things that you would want to do that are evil. A renewed mind gives us the, 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 the heart and the outlook that hate evil because evil destroys. So check yourself. And checklist, you will know whether you are renewed mind or not. Do you love what is good? Because number three says, those who have renewed mind will cling, will hold to what is good. As number three, I have said, my friends, number one, that those who have renewed mind love, yes, without hypocrisy. And I'll say, number two, those who have renewed mind abhor or hate. What is evil? You can, I can know who you are by your friends. Even for example, you know, this thing defeats me. I, I still not convinced, I don't know. I, I buy clothes that they will cover me. But I will go and buy a new cloth I've seen in the streets. When ready, here is torn or cut. Or, then I said, why would I? But anyway, you, some would need to explain that to me. But you will cling to what is good. Those are found in verse 9 of that book. Then, number 4. And I want us to read in verse 10. Those who have renewed mind in the book of uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 10 bring something. And I want us to check that thing also. We be kind or we are kindly affected to one another with a brotherly love. There will be, there will be a, a brotherly love. That means it's a love that I do not do harm to the other. You see, this is repeated twice. There's love without hypocrisy, but there's the brotherly love. A love of fellow people, of one another. How I pray. The brotherly love is knowing, and I want to explain this one, that we are all children of the same father. It has nothing with where we were born. For example, I was telling some people this morning, of course, you have your tribes. Who chose the tribe you are born in, to be born in that tribe? Who? Who? Then why do you hate somebody and see him because of just a tribe and because of a language that, that you can now discriminate. No, we have a brother in love. Those who are renewed mind see everyone as a brother, as a sister, because we have the same father and the same direction. So we'll not be talking about it as law and the local. Those who are, are, are from the community and those who are not from the community. We are all brothers. When our minds are renewed, we know we are going the same direction. We are the same father. Our father was in heaven. So why would we discriminate when you find people, even between male and female? We are all children of God. By the way, in the sight of God, that's why in the new world made new, there will be no female or what? There will be nobody carrying any tribal tag. So when you hear anybody walking with a tribal tag, no! What is missing is a renewed mind. 
when somebody views people through the filter of tribe, the brotherly love is missing. And that tells me my mind needs to be renewed. Number five, and I want us to see number five, and this one I want in a softer translation. I don't want it in the, 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 the New King James or the King James. I like either the Living Bible or another Bible. On uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 11, because the word that is used there, I love the other words than this one in those other translations. I don't know those who are back there. Do you have any other translation apart from the New King James? Perhaps the Living Bible that I read this morning or any other Bible except not King James. Now, this one is important to me and to all of us who are here, students and staff and anybody else listen to me. It says, let me see, uh, 12 verse 11, never lacking in seal. I don't want that one. Bring me another translation. Aha. Uh -huh. Almost. I wish somebody would bring my... Do you have a living Bible? The word used in the living Bible is that do not be being lazy. The word is lazy. Let me read what I had written here. Do not be lazy, but work hard. So you are not being lazy, but work. those who renewed mind are not lazy. By the way, there's something that has made us very much lazy. There are two things that have made us lazy. One is this thing called the what? The phone. Because even in studying everything, you say, bless me, Google. You Google almost everything. I I'm glad that the exams are physical. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Yes, I'm glad the exams are what? Physical. You will not be having time to Google there, whatever, because Google has almost everything. So you don't want to think, you let Google think for what? For you. You don't want to check spelling. You know there are times people are checked for spelling. Now you don't want to check spelling because the, the spelling will come when you start typing. But, but why do you know that most of us have seen, and this, this afternoon I was passing, that there some people, and I'm seeing three of them, they, they were walking. And one of them was alone there, busy with the phone. I don't know what he was doing, but I think because there's some internet there. He was busy on the phone, and you see, most of us spend endless time, students, on the what? Seeing other people, seeing other people kill one another, seeing whatever. You spend, what, how many times do you spend here? In this thing here, we call the phone. And what are you looking at those phones? And now when the time comes, you are not ready because you have not been working hard. Now you want to look for a way to cheat in exams. No wonder there's cheats all over in our country and even in this university because you have not been working hard you have not been preparing you have been wasting your time on other things the reason people steal like the people stealing people you, you don't want to work but you want to enjoy the benefit of those who work so you steal from them you don't want to study but you want to pass what exams so what do you do you carry things either in your pant or what, or you, you try to do something so that you will interface with it when you do exams. But those who work hard, who pray to God, by the way, if there's a time the church needs to be full is now. Because we need to pray so that the God can bring to memory what you have done what? Yes. But you see, some people are thinking now is the time to do what? Now you look at the book, the book will look back to you like this one. Because when it was time to look at the book, you are not looking at it. You are looking at other things. When it was time to review, you were looking busy, looking at nude people, nude pictures. Now, when you are panicking, you look this one. No wonder some people fake sickness. Or in high schools, do you know when the schools are banned? Towards the end of the semester. Or when people want to do exams. Because you have not prepared. When you have a renewed mind, you do the right thing at the right time in the right way to the glory of God. So if there's a time that this place would have been packed, it is now. Because now I'm going to the next part. Number six. 
We must rejoice in that verse 12. We must rejoice in hope because hope tells us the world do not end now. Paul tells us when you renewed mind, you have things that goes beyond what is here. Some of us only think things here. But I want to let you know, my friends, this world has not the solution. This world is not the end. The end is with who? It's with God. The end is not with us. The end is with God himself. And so hope help us to see far. Not only the classroom. Not only the employment. Not only the boyfriend or girlfriend. But to see far. When this, everything here, while this world comes to an end, there are things that do not end. Hope gives us the power to walk looking. It's, it's a telescope. It makes you see far where things that are eternal resides. And then in verse 12, can we read verse 12 now? Let me read the Bible first. Verse 12. I re rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, and uh, continuing steadfastly in prayer. There are three that I will pick. Number one, we must be, number seven, we must be patient in trials that we go through. Patience is a mark of those who are renewed in mind. Some of us are never patient with yourselves. Never patient with your studies. Never patient with your friends. You are always in the go. You try that, you try that one. You try this, you try that one. Those with renewed minds are patient in the handling of things. But more than that, when they go through trying moments, they trust in the hope that tell them it will be over. Somebody made a joke that the mother bed, bed bugs tells the younger bed bugs it will be hot, but only for a time. Yes, it will be hot. You know, sometimes how to kill them, we would bring hot water and pour the bed. But the mother tells them it will be hot, yes, but just for a time. It will not last. So just harden yourself. It will be hot, but for a time. Yes, troubles will come, but they will not be there forever. Yes, darkness may come in your way, but those with the renewed mind knows there is light beyond the darkness that we see. Then the second one, which is number eight, was praying steadfastly. Praying steadfastly. You know that one? That's what I'm saying. Those who have renewed know that on our knees we achieve more than in any positions. When we turn to God who knows everything, he will be able to take care of our past, of our present, and our future. I repeat, when we turn to God, he's the only one able to take care of our past, our present, and our future. He's the only one. Nobody else can do that one. And we can achieve that through prayer. There's a text in the Bible that amazed me. Let me divert a little bit. I was reading the book of Matthew. You know, I have started reading the book of Matthew. I've gone through. I came I, around a, a, a parable or something that Jesus said. I don't know whether you read it. In the book of Matthew 17, 14, 21. Now, they were t Jesus was talking about demons. Hello? Talk about what? Demons. And you know, he almost everyone will have demons. And he's saying there are certain demons, there are kind of demons in verse 21. You can put that one, what Jesus said. On, on Matthew 17, 21. You can check that one. There's a statement I want to pick. However, this kind does not go out except by prayer and word. This kind, there's this kind of demon that will never go away without what? Prayer and fasting. And you may be thinking of the demons you know, but there are several demons of addictions. 
There's some demons of sexual addictions. That's a demon. Of some cheats. Those are demons. But for them to come out, they can only come through what? Prayer. And that's what said. Jesus says, you continue. Those who read mind knows that our problems are turned to solutions. Our mountains are easy to climb. Our valleys are filled when we turn to who? To God. We have a power that, that, key, that opens all doors, yet we do not use it. We think it is there in, in, school, in books. We think it's there in money or in connections to our friends. I want to connect you to a friend that I know who have everything in his hands. He holds the whole world and we can approach him through what? Prayer. And so those who have renewed mind knows how to get things from heaven. How to open doors that are locked. How to bring the, out the demons of sickness. How time may not allow me, but I pray that those who renew mind will spend time in prayer. Try it. Are you heavy when then? Tell it to who? To Jesus alone. Try him. You will never go wrong. I can give you my guarantee on that one. You can go wrong with me. You can go wrong with the teachers. You can go wrong with the parents. You can go wrong with the colleagues. But you never go wrong with God. You can go wrong with your government. But not with who? Try him through prayer. Number nine. In verse 17. Time may not allow me, but I will speak briefly on number nine. And number nine found in the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 17 and verse 21 brings one concept. Romans chapter 12 you can bring verse 17 and then verse 21 say, repay no one evil for evil and then have regards for good things. In verse 21 do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good. You know when the Lord has renewed your mind you will not be a somebody who wants to overcome evil with what? So number nine I'd written here, not repaying evil for evil but overcoming evil with good. That's what the Bible says. Yes the goodness comes from God and the, that's why I've, I've told people many times and it's there in the Romans chapter 5. Where sin abound, what abounds much more? So that grace has power to overcome what? Sin. That's what will overcome. Good will overcome evil. How do the Bible ends? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Finally, grace will win because we have allowed God to let people know that sin will not win. So evil will not win. And that's why you may start winning here over evil with good. And then number 10, which is a problem, and I want to end with that one. Not being revengeful. Chapter 19, not being revengeful. I mean, if I knew Evi, Ntafanya Evi. He has done this to me, I will do it for what? An eye for an what? will make the whole world what? Blind. In the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 19 is the text I'd want to close with. And I want to read it slowly. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath, for it is written, vengeance is who? Is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. So do not take the place of God. That if something, that somebody does something to you, you don't want to look for what to do to him or to her. That spirit, it tells me I have not a mind renewed. I'm still in darkness where people revenge, where people pay evil for evil. You give me, I give you. No. Those with renewed minds, have no room 
By the way, I want to bring a very hard statement, but it's a true statement. Have no room of holding grudges. Do you know that in life, he who holds grudge or bitterness in himself suffers more than the one he does it against him yeah. or her? Yeah. Do you know that one? It's like you're the one who wants to kill somebody, but you're the one drinking the poison. You're the one who is, and most of us are bitter. Most of us even sometimes become mad because of something somebody did a long time ago. They have no space for forgiveness. They hold it and they want to pay. No, it's not justice. God, take care of our details. My friends, I may not have more to say, but let me tell you, those with renewed minds have ten things. Let's remind ourselves of them. Number one was what? Those who have renewed mind have love without what? Love without what? Hypocrisy. And number two, what did we say? They abhor what? What is evil. And number three, what did we say? They, we cling to what is what? It's good. Yes, those with renewed mind, number four, do, do what? They are kindly affectionate to one another. With what? Brotherly love. And number five, not being lazy but they are working hard. And number six, they are rejoicing in the hope, the hope of soon coming Lord. And then number seven, they are present in what? I'm not hearing what are happening, number seven. And then number eight, they are praying what? Steadfastly. And then number nine, not repaying what? Evil for what? But overcoming evil with what? With good. And the last but not least, number 10. Not being revengeful. Because vengeance belongs to who? My friends, check yourself. How many people, they're all there, 10. How many people are saying, me, when I check that list, my mind has been renewed. Because all those things that are there, by the grace of God, they're found in my life. Let me see those who are saying, me, I'm there. Those who are saying, I'm not there, but I want to ask God, to keep me there, to renew my mind. Let me see those ones now. Those ones can stand with me. <laughs> and you know what you want God to ask you. I will give you a minute. Tell God that which you are still seeing in your life that you'd want him to take care. Whether revengefulness, whether love with hypocrisy, whether you are not affectionate, you know it. I give you one minute, then I'll pray as we close this service. Yes, Father, you have spoken to us through your servant that we need a renewed mind. A mind that will be the mind of heaven. I know the devil has darkened our life. But tonight we surrender. For the renewal of the mind, for the transformation of our inside and outside so that, Lord, we will walk looking up to you. Help us, Father, as we go through exams, as we go through trials. Be with us because you have promised that you'll there be with us forever. May you talk and may you forgive this young lady, this young man, and may you keep us together. And may our experience be that of love to you now and forever, we pray in Jesus' name. Okay, let's kindly be seated, please. Those who are walking at the door, what, what, where are you running to? I'll say, let's.